In addition to praying the rosary on the five first Saturdays of the month and making the communion of reparation, Our Lady has asked us to keep her company for 15 minutes, meditating upon one of the mysteries contained in her Holy Rosary. Today we join her in contemplating the scourging of our Lord at the pillar. The disciples have fled. Our Lord is cruelly apprehended by the servants of the High Priest. They drag him and pull him across the pathways leading to Jerusalem, the center of Jerusalem. He is brought before Annas and then Caiaphas and treated by these apparently holy men with such derision. Our Lord is struck by one of the servants of that high priest and the wicked Caiaphas nods in approval. The wicked Jews wish to see our Lord killed but they are unable to execute him themselves. So they wait till morning and deliver him to Pilate, asking him, demanding of him, that their King, our blessed Lord, be crucified. Pilate looks on our Lord and wonders. His wife has had dreams concerning this man. She says, He is holy. Pilate looks at him, his human form, and wonders. He looks into his eyes and wonders, is that eternity behind those eyes? Pilate, distracted by worldly concerns, is not convicted in the core of his soul by our Lord's glance, but turns away. He is swayed by his own well-being and the possible riot of the Jews. So he hands our blessed Lord over to Herod, the iniquitous Herod. Herod had longed to see our Lord for some time But this man, so filled with impurity, our Lord does not even deign to speak to, does not even look at. Our Lord keeps his eyes downcast in the presence of this vile, lecherous worldling. O Lord Jesus, I may receive many punishments from you in this life of mine. Many just chastisements for my sins. But sweetest Lord, never allow allow the fate to befall on me as fell upon Herod. Speak to me always, Lord. Let me hear your sweet voice in my heart. Do not remain silent when I am with you, Lord. But tell me if I'm sinning, allow me to hear your sweetest voice so I can convert more fully to following you. Our Blessed Mother, during that night of our Lord's imprisonment, keeps united to him in prayer, her heart beating alongside his. She feels everything. She knows everything. The angels are informing her of what is occurring to her son. And periodically, the apostles, the disciples, are bringing her news of the events that have been unfolding. Saint Bridget of Sweden relates 
that Our Lady goes to the Praetorium. And this is the second time she sees Jesus. She saw him in the agony. And now the second time she sees him in the Praetorium. Already he has been beaten and bruised and is covered with wounds from the evil attacks of the servants of the high priest. And she sees as her fellow countrymen call for him to be executed. How she shudders as she hears all around her the voices crucify him, crucify him. She had always known from the prophecies that our Lord was to be the Lamb of God. But now it is occurring. It strikes her with a force that she had never anticipated. How could she have? Pilate, unsure what to do, says, no, I will not crucify him, but I will chastise him and let him go. For what reason do you chastise the blessed Lord, O Pilate? What crime is he guilty of? Our Lord is brought into the courtyard. The pillar is in the center. And our Lord's arms are stretched. And his hands are attached to near the top of the pillar. Our Lady has followed. She sees our Lord as his clothing is removed. She sees those evil men who Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich describes as possessed by demons. Evil men, Egyptian criminals who were drunk with wine and possessed by demons. These evil men were the ones to inflict our law with the chastisement, not of the manner of the Jews, but of the Romans. Cruel in excess to our Redeemer was this torture of his scourging. St. Mary Magdalene of Pazzi tells us that there were not fewer than 60 men beating him. The Jews had bribed them with money. They wanted this scourging to kill him. Lest perhaps Pilate release him. They used the sharpest of implements, and every stroke produced multiple wounds, such that the number of wounds amounted to several thousand. Our Lord, when he revealed himself to Saint Teresa of Avila in his scourging, had pieces of flesh falling off him. Ah, oh, my beloved and adored Jesus, how much have you suffered for love of me? Let not so many pangs and so much blood be lost for me. Jesus one day manifested himself under his scourging to Sister Vir Victoria Angelini and showing her his body as one mass of wounds said to her, these wounds, Victoria, every one of them ask you for love. We see our blessed lady. She is offering him the love that he deserves. Blessed mother, love him on my behalf, especially for those moments when I have failed to love him. Love him on my behalf. Blessed Mother, I was one of those wicked men scourging our Lord by my sins. 
yet you not only look in pity and in love on your son, but you look in love upon me, one of our Lord's murderers. What a heart of love you have for your enemies, Blessed Mother. Make my heart like yours. Our Lady described the scene to St. Bridget. As the Lord was brought to the pillar, he was then dragged along the ground and thrown down so cruelly and violently that it knocked his head and broke his teeth. He was struck on his neck and cheek so forcefully that the sound of the blows reached my ears. At the command of the executioner, he undressed himself and freely hugged the pillar. He was bound with a rope and then scourged with barbed whips. The barbs caught in his skin and were then pulled backwards, not just tearing, but plowing into him so as to wound his whole body. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich writes, Jesus trembled and shuddered before the pillar with his own hands swollen and bloody from the tight cords, and in tremulous haste, he laid aside his garments, while the executioner struck and abused him. He prayed and implored so touchingly, and for one instant, turned his head towards his most afflicted mother, who was standing with, his, with the holy women in the corner of one of the porches around the square not far from the scourging place. Turning to the pillar, as if to cover himself by it, Jesus said, Turn your eyes from me. I know not whether he said these words vocally or mentally, but I saw how Mary took them, for at the same moment I beheld her turning away and sinking into the arms of the holy women who surrounded her closely veiled. And now Jesus clasped the pillar in his arms, the executioners with horrible imprecations and barbarous pulling fastened his sacred upraised hands by means of a wooden peg behind the, behind the iron ring on top. They so stretched his whole body that his feet, tightly bound below at the base, scarcely touched the ground. There stood the Holy of Holies, divested of clothing, laden with untold anguish and ignominy, stretched upon the pillar of criminals. Our Lord and Saviour, the Son of God, true God and true man, quivered like a poor worm under the strokes of the criminal's rods. He cried in a suppressed voice and a clear, sweet, sounding wailing like a loving prayer under excruciating torture formed from his lips. Blessed Mother, how can I accompany you in this mystery? How can I dare to look at this mystery when I'm reminded that I was one of those guilty ones? For as our Lord was scourged, as every strike hit his back, he saw me. He saw my sins, every one of them. And each stroke had an added pain on account of my sin, as he offered an apology for my sins in particular, in concrete. Blessed Mother, how can I have the strength to keep these 15 minutes with you? Mother Mary, at least in these minutes of meditation, let me pledge no more to sin again and to avoid above all the sins of sensuality, impurity, the delight of taste when it is taken to an inordinate degree, that there may be no more sins, no more strikes of that whip upon our Lord's back, which I may be seen 
as inflicting. Instead, let me spend this mystery like Saint John, who holds you. Like Magdalene, once a sinner herself, who now wishes to be by your side. Who detests the sins of the past and wishes to console you and to keep you company as you endure this martyrdom of the soul. As our Lord is scourged, I see two rude girls passing by, immodestly dressed. They regard our Lord with feminine disgust and lift up their heads towards him, laughing at him. Perhaps I've been guilty of such disgust and disregard of our Lord's sacrifice in the past, but no longer. Now I love you, Lord. Now I resolve to live a holy life and to live a life that in some way may make up for those previous offences. With your help, Blessed Mother, so may it be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.